Hi, everyone. Welcome to the TimingResearch.com Crowd Forecast News, episode number 298 for May 3rd, 2021. We are recording this at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. My name is David Cosmeter. I'm the creator of TimingResearch.com. And today I have arranged for first time guest Josh Levitin to join us. He's with Cyber Trading University and works closely with Fausto Puglisi, who's a regular on the show. So it's uh, great to have him here. Uh, always good to have new new uh, new people on the show. And also, I uh, the option professor is here to moderate. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to him. OK, great. Uh, welcome, everybody, to this Monday. We're going to have a pretty big active Monday here, and uh, we've got a great guest here. Uh, Josh, just uh, before we get started, uh, for people who are not familiar with yourself, a little background and also what's going on over at Cyber Trading University. Absolutely. First and foremost, David, thank you so much for having me on your platform here today. I know that Fausto is supposed to present. Uh, he's brought some good backup in myself, so I look forward to this next hour. Uh, I've been alongside Fausto and Cyber Trading University since 2014. Uh, I actually walked into Cyber Trading University off an Indeed job interview. I came in with zero stock market trading experience. So, you know, going into this timing research event, I know how prestigious this platform is and how, how wonderful of a guest panel that you typically have on with the amount of experience they have. Don't, don't let that fool you because for the last six and a half years, I've been doing this from Monday to Friday from market open to market close. And that's not necessarily the best starting point for anyone, but it's just to say that I grew into this position. Um, I'm a one trick pony, not a jack of all trades. That's the way I like to label myself. I tend to follow the order flow just like Fausto does between mm -hmm. using level three and level four. And with that, I certainly look forward to talking to you about the S&P coming up across this week. I know that we have a bunch of big earnings announcements still ahead of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, we have a couple of base questions we ask on Monday mornings. Uh, so we let's run by them kind of fast. First one is, is um, from the opening today, which was around, uh, let's call it 4192 on the S&P um, to Friday's close. Do you anticipate the market rising or falling? So it's funny because going into this and going into today, let alone this event, I had the expectation of the, the market dropping off right away upon the open. And I think it was just based on seeing it slowly consolidate higher across the last week without a real big move up or down. And there's a common phrase that I'll mention to our students live inside our cyber group trading room. And you know, it's just to say, if it's not breaking higher, there's only one other way it's going to go. It could be said for an equity, but of course, an index like the S&P. And I, it, going into today, I was looking up just on basic news you know, websites, Market Watch, Bloomberg, et cetera. I go on Market Watch, literally on their homepage. It says, you know, analysts expect 10% drop off on the S&P across so-and-so time. And, you know, you look ahead and for as much as it's been going up, you have to expect to drop at some point now for how long that will drop. That, that, that's for us to kind of find out and react to, right? Right, definitely. And we're kind of at a, a big juncture, this 4,200 plus or minus. You know, it's either A, going to blow through this thing uh, and really give another leg up, or it's going to finally get the correction you're talking about. So it's kind of a binary area. Do you get that feeling? I do just because, you, like I said, and, and like you brought up as well, it tends to be just a tighter range of consolidation. You tend to see these pops and then drops and then just these intermediary closes across the s and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at my chart here, which you cannot see, but that's on the SPY, the S&P ETF, whereas you have, of course, the uh, S&P ticker. So, you know, they're, they're, of course, identical, right? Very similar in, in, in that sense. So I'm, I'm looking just, you know, and one of the differences between myself and Fausto he keeps it very simple. Keep it super simple. The KISS trading method that he employs. And I do that for the most part, but uh, across the last six and a half years, my my mind has kind of wandered. My curiosity, I start using moving averages, which he you know doesn't use as frequent. And right. um, I, I put them on the S&P or I put them on the SPY daily chart. They've been rotting them up, of course, you know, for the last year plus, uh, or, you know, uh, going into the last year, I should say, we had the drop off, then the squeeze back up. But for as much as, as it's been accelerating off the, even the 20 EMA, this is why I think that we're catching our consolidation here across the last week. And, you know, if it ends up making for a big drop, it wouldn't shock me over time to see a bigger drop just across the next two, three months. Uh, I know that, you know, that's, that was hinging upon the banks reporting. I know the blue chip companies reported last week, still a couple today, and that might tell part of the story for what's ahead, at least short term. Right. Uh, with regards to, um, you know, many people that are guests, we ask them what their reasonings are behind what they think it's going to go up or down. But in your situation, you're kind of focused on the order flow. And really, um, you know, while these reports that come out are kind of, you know, interesting, 
aren't you more focused on exactly what is being bought and sold, not so much on what the earnings are going to be on a certain day? Absolutely. So, you know, that's where we say all the time, just because good news comes out, let alone earnings, but, you know, any sort of news, price could be fixed in. And then after that, even if it's not, and you think it's going to make a big move up off of great earnings, well, what happens if the life gets sucked out of that trade rather quick? The only way to really, or the most efficient way, I should say, to really find that out would be by reading the tape reading level three, the ECN book, you know, the order flow altogether in order to make that determination. Now, uh, just to give you, uh, just to ask a question from maybe um, a a attendee's point of view. Last week, we saw um, stocks such as Microsoft, such as uh, Netflix, such as um, Apple, uh, to name three, that had uh, very, very strong reports uh, in in some measures, uh, yet their price action on their stock, let's even just talk about Apple. Uh, this thing tried to go up into the 140s and made an about face, and it had just a absolutely fabulous report. So uh, did order flow give you any tip that um, you should fade that, or what do you think? Not necessarily. I, I think it's more or less just the fact, I know with Apple in particular, they ended up doing a $90 billion buyback, no? Yeah, well, they, uh, they said they're going to, you know, one or the other. Yep. So, so I think that's, that could be part of the reason why you might tend to see a, a slight drop off at first, but long term, that's going to, or that, that you, you would like to think with the buyback, they're doing that for a specific reason. So mm-hmm. what are they going to, you know, do, what are they going to use that money on? So for that reason, that's why I think over time, even, even though you're seeing a small drop off on Apple, you saw a bigger drop off back on Thursday of last week, but now you're seeing the consolidation. Unless if the markets altogether begin to drop, which of course would carry Apple with it, over time, mm-hmm. short term, it should rebound. Now, uh, the, getting back to the order flow thing, I mean, when it was going up towards 137, I guess, around, wasn't that about as high as it got? Yep. Uh, could, you, could, you, you, could you see from order flow that uh, block trades are shorting or selling or liquidating or could you get any? I mean, does it give you any indication that, hey, uh, either volume's drying up up here or there's an awful lot of uh, block selling or anything like that? Or you, you definitely would be able to see that. So, you know, David, if you, you don't mind, I'd love to share my screen very briefly, um, you know, yeah. just to kind of show what we nicknamed Level 4, a company by the name of Bookmap that we've partner, partnered with here at Cyber Training University. Whereas Level 3, what we nicknamed for the order book, Level 3, the ECN book, those are orders that are looking to be filled. So, you know, with that, this program, Bookmap, provides a heat map type structure to the order book. So it provides a great visual. Um, Oh, actually, you know what? Very briefly, this is very funny going into this. So I'm going to load this up in just a second. Right before we pressed record and David was introducing me here, I ended up uh, losing internet and I had to reboot my computer. So with that, I I don't have the book map program up right now. Let me do that here. It takes about maybe a minute. Uh, Nonetheless, though, you should be able to see my screen on the Apple chart, my platform. I have it up on a 10-minute graph on the left, and then from there, a daily chart on the right, which you could see the uh, EMAs. Here's level three. Officially, what we call, or officially, our, my platform trade station, the Matrix program. So for Apple, right here, you could see really not as many big orders across the bidder, the ask at this time. Uh, that's partially because just typically going into the late morning, the early afternoon, you typically see much less volume traded per minute. So that's why you're getting that right now. Unless if Apple's driving down to a major support that it hasn't tested yet or reapproaching a major resistance that it fell through just previously throughout the morning. I would, I would not expect for there to be much visibility out there. Now, with that said, with Bookmap, this program, it will show you that and will show you the history across the order book from the day today. So I have it up right now. You should be able to see it, right? Yeah, I can see it. Okay, great. So, it, you know, I cannot show that pop back from the 27th from last week. Uh, I think, or the, what was it, the 27th or the 28th, uh, I, this can only go back just the previous 24 hours. So that including just mainly today. So if you could picture this just kind of being the earnings base pop that we caught back from the 28th, well, notice that these darker orange lines that are out here, right? The horizontal red and orange lines, those represent uh, orders on the ask, big sell orders, traders that are uh, shareholders that are looking to get out of the position or traders that are looking to short. It goes both, w- both ways. So at least from today, right? This is just today, May 3rd. You could see after the open, we ended up seeing this make a nice push up and it was with the market, but we ended up seeing Apple make a nice pop through 133 at first. 
Now, the interesting thing on this trade, and in terms of reading the order flow, again, I'm just relating this to today. I can't go back to the 28th. Um, I wish I was able to, but you know, just looking at this and utilizing this data to predict price action. Well, you would like to think just between the breakout off these highs from today, roughly 132.88, and then the orders that got filled, the, as we would call it, Fausto and myself, we would call it buying volume as this order on the ask gets hit. We would expect this to create a support at least after the market opens. So what shocks me or what surprises me at least is to see this, you know, as it comes back down, it breaks through this white line as we would call the VWAP, the volume weighted average, average price, ends up driving right down through 133. It doesn't even give it a chance to hold support. So in terms of our strategy and predicting uh, price action based on the order flow, well, we would easily expect this to hold as a big support at first, but with the way this was just freely dropping, it wasn't even breaking through much volume across the bid, because if there was any volume on the bid, you would see it just across the heat map here, a darker orange or red line popping across here. You know, that's your first hint of it right here at 133. But you know, we would never look to buy a stock on the way down. We wouldn't look to buy a stock just on the bid and kick our feet up and expect everything to be fine and dandy. Mm -hmm. This is the, the perfect example as to why that's not okay. So, you know, if you were to buy right here off this 133 or even off this 132.88 ish price from, from earlier after the open, right? The pop and drop and the breakout from this peak. You're not looking too good now as far as a day trade. Now, as far as a swing trade or, or like at least a trade across the remaining days of this week, well, that's where I would just focus even on a bigger scale. You can scroll back on this program and you know basically just see a bigger order or a bigger orders that are across the ask here at 134, 135. So 135 certainly should be a long, uh, long term resistance should be a short term resistance, you know, across today, across tomorrow, perhaps even Wednesday of this week. Uh, I say long term because I'm a day trader. So I apologize right. for that. Right, yeah. But, you know, so nonetheless, though, on the bid, you could see potential support coming in off of 131, 131, 50, 132. And that is, you know, casual. That's very common, rather, I should say, provided more volume just for any stock, let alone a blue chip like this, you're more likely to see volume spread across the order book level three. And you're shown on as we would nickname level four across, you know, the 50 cent levels and whole round numbers like, like these. Mm -hmm. There's probably a bigger support coming in. Mm -hmm. Probably hasn't fallen too much. Oh, nope. There it is. Look at this at 130. So even outside of the 50 cent levels and whole numbers, which us day traders would be more interested in just using you know, on a level by level trade, the darker red lines uh, represent the bigger support or resistance. So that's where I would say even a decade number like 130, you know, a $5 increment number from that, like 135, 125, those are to be even bigger levels likely on a trade like Apple. Can I just ask a couple of quick questions? The uh, white line that goes through it, is that some type of a moving average? So that's the VWAP, the volume weighted average price. So for all okay. the volume shown across this you know, picture here, it calculates right. the volume traded based on the average price. So you know, after the market opens, that's why even further, pardon me, but even further, I would expect this area here, even as it crashes below this white line, to be uh -huh. support. Yeah. To have this 133 here. But if it breaks under this price, and runs from it, a common principle that we teach in our classes and our one-on-one -on -one coaching program that I do. If it, even if you expect this to be support, it breaks through it so fast. I know it's easy to say this in hindsight, looking at mm -hmm. you know an already painted picture. Mm -hmm. But again, it, it, this is a perfect example. Yeah, Th this support becomes resistance again. So you can't expect this to just break through this price because it freely fell through it when you were expecting this to hold at first. The big uh, green ball versus the big red ball. What's the difference again in those? So the way I have this structure, this program is, program is very customizable and, and you can, you know, there's a bunch of settings that you can employ on this, but uh -huh. it's to say that the larger dots represent bigger singular transactions that are on the time and sales program. So okay. in terms of reading the tape, allow me just to uh, jump, jump back to my main regular platform that most of us are just used to. Right. And even if you're not used to trade station, and of course, you know, very similar tools on your own platform, whether it's Thinkorswim, Fidelity, Interactive Brokers, Schwab, you name it. But right here, the time and sales program, this is where we're seeing the already completed transactions from, from the day. 
So as this, you know, Apple trades moving, and I could jump even to a one minute chart here, you know, mm -hmm. squeezing up and down in this you know, just tight range just across a slow Monday afternoon. But the time in sales represents transactions that have already been filled from level three, but also from market from market transactions. So you need to read this in order to identify the bigger fills, including even here. I mean, this isn't too big in the grand scheme of 48 million shares almost today, but right, you, know, right. you can see a couple of these larger fills filled at the bid. They're filled in red. That means that they were filled on the bid side. You would think that that is now a buyer's shares. And, and that is, but for every buyer, there's a seller. That's exactly what we teach here at Cyber Trading University. So you know, seeing this in red, I would say that that's not always a good sign in terms of expecting this to move up higher. In fact, if we happen to just see this hold under that price and we see more of this red over time, it wouldn't shock me to see this you know, continue to drop lower. Of course, the market's you know, hinging or this is depending upon what the market does mainly, but you can see the spies just kind of just doing nothing really here, made a higher low or you know, relatively mm -hmm. double bottom and squeezed up a bit, but you know, just pretty slow here going into this Monday afternoon. Yeah, well, uh, what about 28% of the SPY is into like a few of the tech stocks. So, if, you know, if you can't get Apple going and the other ones going, it's hard to get the SPYs going. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah. Um, in terms of the earnings, I was really looking forward to the remaining parts of this week. I have my big whiteboard earnings calendar, which, of course, you folks can't see. But, uh, you know, today I didn't have any earnings listed. Uh, there was actually one that snuck up on me here today. It was a stock that we're very familiar with live inside our trading room, a stock Vaxert VXRT. Are you guys familiar familiar with this trade? No. Certainly, certainly not a blue chip. <laughs> so this stock has been in the news for a long while since basically March of last year going into, you know, the vaccine talk, you know, this stock alongside a slew of others, you know, that ended up making a speculative you know, news and pops and drops you know, from that. Well, this ended up coming out with a bunch of news across the last week or so that led to a huge squeeze up. This stock was uh, highly shorted to begin with. You know, there's a bunch out there that are very heavily shorted still, even after that whole Reddit craze. But, mm -hmm. you know, this was one of them. And I, I'm sure the Reddit folks there ended up, you know, catching on with this and it pumped up more than, than it should have. Uh, but this ended up sneaking up on me here today. It ended up dropping right at eight o'clock. You could see there. I mean, I apologize for all the, the wacky lines here as well. I could explain that here. That goes in part of my personal prep with day trading a stock like this. But it's to say simply though, after this drop, you know, some bad news happens. And if it's not bad news, maybe it's a direct offering of shares to where it drops down to where the, the listed price is at. You know, that, that happens frequent. But man, you check out the earnings. They ended up reporting worse earnings than expected. And we ended up seeing them drop off even further after the open. So this ended up remaining a great trade, a great short going into this morning here. I got a question for you. Um, you do, do you go by sector sometimes or you just have a certain, you know, inventory of the stocks you're watching? Because today, you know, we just heard the Buffett uh, announcement over the weekend on uh, some of his thoughts and three, you know, a couple of things hit me. Uh, four week treasury bills are at zero interest. Um, his businesses are seeing higher prices and people are willing to pay them. And then, of course, he's got a red hot economy going. <clears throat> that sounds like a recipe for the metals and oil. And, um, you know, I, I'm uh, seeing uh, my exposure in metal and oil doing very good this year, uh, this uh, day. Do you uh, like a Newman, let's, you know, rather than using an index, what about like a Newman mining or a GDX or something? Absolutely. GDX is a great one to follow here. It's an ETF. So in terms of using this <clears throat> map program, level four, as we nickname it, it's tougher to use based on the ETF uh, orders that are out there because, you know, there are a lot largely algo driven, I feel. So in terms of seeing that, and along with that, ETFs are made up based upon stocks, bonds, et cetera. So, mm -hmm. you know, with this here, what is this, Van, uh, Van Eck? Okay, yeah, this is Van Eck Gold ETF. So I don't know exactly what this is composed of. I know that JNUG- It's got uh, a lot of big, big companies, like generally. Newmont. Yeah, okay, Newmont right. and uh, Barrick and those kind of guys. Okay, great. So Newmont could be a stock that we could look at here. Uh, yeah. it, maybe it will look a lot more, as I would kind of call it, normal. Uh, right. So here, let me pull this up. It will probably take about 30 seconds on our heat map program here. You know, mm -hmm. a nice push up today on, on NEM. We ended up seeing it make, as Fausto and myself would call, a slingshot move where it ends up dropping down, coiling up, and ended up seeing the, the breakout higher later on. Right. So let's take a look here. So Looks like anything above 63 was a deal. 
so one facet of day trading that, that we typically look at, and it might be tougher to use here just from the pre-market, there wasn't a whole lot of activity within the pre-market and that's fine, but it's to say, what if history repeats itself? That, that's just the common question that we like to ask. So what if history repeats itself in the sense of buying? So after the market opened up this morning, and this is pretty important, I'll bring this back to my trade station chart, my normal platform in just a moment, but you were asking about the big dots. Uh -huh. And you know this right here, is, it shows the data box that you could see there. It's kind of faint writing in white, but it says volume 10,100 at 63.35. That's not really that big in the grand scheme of things, 10,000 shares. But on a percentage of what it normally does, is it big? Well. That I can't answer right off the yeah. top of my head. Probably right, right, not. Pro right. Probably not really. Right. But this is pretty big. One hundred thirty-eight thousand two hundred thirteen at sixty-three forty-eight. So that is what I personally call, and we teach this within our phase two. It's within our intermediate uh, course that we provide, but it's what we call the mm -hmm. opening bell print. It's a it's a market on open transaction that, right. sh that shows up on the time and sales platform here, the program, I should say. Uh, so I'll even just show this straight from the tape from this morning. Uh, thankfully, my, my broker platform trade station allows me to go back on the uh, time and sales with their trade station 10 here. Let me just check this fast. And I only show this just because th this is common. This is normal on a day-to-day -day basis. So you could see it right there. And it's actually a, a duplicate here, print in white. So disregard that if you can. But it's this is the uh, exact transaction that I just read off to you. So this showed up right at 9.30 this morning. It creates a level. So if you just think about that and say, well, for all of that big volume that got filled, 138,000 plus shares at exactly that price, Who's buying and selling and transacting at that price at that time? I don't know. I, I can't answer that. But all I know is that that's pretty big. You know, mm -hmm. the stock today is trading three and a half million shares. So yeah. I, I don't know <laughs> the percentage of that print to that volume total across the day. But, you know, that's fairly big for what we would look for in a, in a $63 stock. Mm -hmm. So it's like asking if you were to see on level <laughs> three here, you know, this is what we call the order book, the ECN book, level three. If you were to see a 100, 38,000 share order on the ask here compared to all these other orders that are out there currently at this time. Is that not huge? No, totally. So you would have to respect that. And with yeah. that, he, this is where I ask, what if history repeats itself? So it's easy to study from in hindsight, but this is the way that we instruct and teach in our classes and our trading room, et cetera. So when this ends up initially breaking through this 63.48 price, it makes a false breakout, a pop and drop. This is you know, a very quick false breakout, mind you. This is only about four minutes worth of time, five minutes worth of time here. But mm -hmm. as a day trade, if you see and recognize the false breakout at first here, and if you have strength, if, if, if you're bullish on the sector, Right. right. And not right. everyone can say that there is. I'm just you know, spitballing here saying if you're following gold, if you're bullish short term across the week, long term, of course. But, you know, on the short side of the short term side of things, it's easy to say. But when this re breaks over this price here, this is your entry point to get in. Right. As far as a day trade, at least now on a swing trade, you might sit here and say, well, why not buy lower from this price? Yeah, it's easy to say in hindsight that you can get in lower from 63.20 and so forth. But we're not following a stock on the way down, right? We just talked right. about that with Apple, right? We just yeah. did that song and dance on Apple and look where it is, right? I mean, your philosophy is basically, we're not going to try to pick the low point. We want to get on a train that's running. We're a momentum player. And until the, until the momentum is going your way, you know, you're not looking to play uh, pin the tail on the falling knife. That is exactly it, right? Yeah. Like, you know, in terms of day trading in particular and the way that uh -huh. the, the, our style of trading, that is... It's kind of frowned upon because it's very dangerous, right? I mean, yeah. hey, I can't tell you that it's not. That would be very irresponsible of me. Right. But it's for me to tell you that so long as you have <clears throat> structure, discipline, organization, and if you have the, the effort to put in yourself to study and really to learn from your mistakes, what other right. traders are doing themselves, just be a good student. That's all. You know, age is just a number in this game. I mean, yeah. we, have, we have folks that are... 60, 70, 80 that are trading with us live every day. You know, they have their own accounts, they have their own account sizes, they do their own share sizes, but right. they're with us, they're studying, they're following up with us, and they're gaining a lot every day. Uh, two other things I just want to look at um, silver and the energy. Uh, SILJ definitely uh, looked like it was going someplace here right on the opening as well. 
Okay, so the SILJ trade is trading over 1 million shares today. Is it? Yeah, this is um, oh, Fang ETF. Okay, Sil so, Silver Juniors, yeah. Yep, so the one I would go with, and this one trades just more volume for us here. Oh, yeah, the, the, those myself. are the more um, blue chipper ones, yeah. Yeah, the SLV here. Uh, yep. And then also, I don't think this is an ETF. I mean, please let me know if I'm wrong because I've- No, no, that's that. Pan American. Yeah, 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 Pan American obviously is one of the front runners. One of the bigger silver equities, that is. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. Right. So right. let me pop this up on our heat map program and I'll kind of do a similar analysis. You know, it's yeah. easy to say that both moved up very similar to what we saw out of mm -hmm. gold today. All metals ended up doing well. When you had said metal as well, one thing for me, when I first started learning with Fausto, even as an employee, with zero market experience back in 2014. You know, I'm sitting on the sidelines as a student, quote unquote, learning and really picking this up, you know, just day in, day out, more than right. most or anyone. This stock X, US Steel, is like one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. uh, for any of our students that might be listening in alive or over the recording at least, but you know, they'll get a kick out of hearing that. I used to love trading X back when it was a uh, 10, 12, $14 stock. This right. was back before the 2016 election. And then, then it took off. It fell out of our price range. I'll load this up as well, just because it's a personal interest. Yeah. And uh, it's an industrial metal and there's supposed to be some uh, bottlenecks on supplies of these things. So the SLV trade, and I'd assume the same with Pan American, this is like the, the type of look that you'll get it from this program if it's an ETF or a fund at least. And you know you don't really see much visibility out there. You don't see a, any darker orange or red lines that stretch across this screen. And you know, it's to say that if you were able to see that, at least that gives you something to work off of. You know, right. That gives you some sense of support or resistance to work off of here. Uh, at least with Newmont Mining, you saw that at least throughout the morning here at 6370-ish year. 6420 it popped up one here that was stretched across the day at a major level 6450 so for slv you don't really have that there so i mean it's easy to say because it already happened and all of these were moving similarly but you know based on this opening bell print that market on open transaction that that i mentioned before on newmont this here is a 252,000 share transaction priced at 2460 if you scale this back you should see that 201,000. I guess that aggregates it a little bit more, but you know, at 2460, a 201,000 share print came in on this SLV trade. So it made the same exact move. Uh, I think X might be a better one just because being an equity, it definitely has a better look to it on this heat map structure. Like you could yeah. see even pre-market, there was resistance off of 2399. Uh, I'd mentioned before, before with Apple that for an equity at least, and especially a blue chip like Apple, and we'll call X, you know, more well-known well stock, a blue chip, you know, steel stock, uh, you're more likely to find bigger orders off those 50 cent price levels and whole numbers. So here off of 23.50, when this pops up and you happen to see this, it goes to show that that's a pretty big order that's out there, a big sell order that's out there. It creates a resistance, but that's resistance until that order gets filled. So when that order gets filled, that's the momentum that you would like to see in order to, you know, potentially, and that's the key word, of course, because, you know, it's all looking back in hindsight, but, you know, potentially see the stock move up over time. Yeah. The idea is, you know, to try to follow the uh, momentum and the order flow and, 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 and ride it uh, until it stops uh, doing that. And then on a day trade, you know, you're trying to get out when it looks like the momentum has turned, right? Absolutely. Like yeah. as, as far as the day trade today, I stopped trading roughly around like 10 45, 11 o'clock this morning uh, for a Monday. I, well, it's a long story, but I was being more cautious with my trading today because I was on a really nice hot streak from dating back to Friday of the week before last. And you know that that's that not luck, but that hot streak is going to end at some point. You'll run into a couple of ruts or, you know, silly trades or the market's not going to move the way you want it to. So I thought of that ahead of time. I had a good morning today. I, I took my money and ran. Uh, now I say that because you look at this X trade, I wouldn't be in this trade even if I finished up nicely from before. I just right now wouldn't be the time to be trading this. I know that's hard to say actually because this ended up making a big squeeze up. There could have been some good money to take on this trade. When this ended up moving up to the resistance off of $24, you could see that there was a bigger order on mm -hmm. the ask, roughly about 17, 16,000 plus shares. So I would expect that to hold if that was there, especially since pre-market hours or, you know, as the market opened up, that solidified into a resistance level off of 24. If I was in a trade here, I would easily sell a 24. Uh, it pushed up a little bit higher, but that's not to say that you can't get back in later on. 
I mean, the ship has gone and sailed for us here, at least if I ever wanted to jump in on 24. But at least if you were watching this from about 10, 15 minutes ago, you could see when it rebroke that 24, you ask, what if history, what if history repeats itself? So based on the initial buying that you had, that's the that's how you want to go with the momentum. There was a false breakout here. All right, that's fine. And there was one here as well. But if it keeps needling that resistance and breaks through it, that's where you look to take the trade. So it's easy to say, but if you jump in at 24 and even on 500 shares, you're picking up $120 profit right now in what, 10 minutes time, 15 minutes time. Right. And again, that's the whole idea with the day trading is obviously to get in and out and to try to grab some money and try to ride a little momentum. That's pretty much the long and short of it, right? Exactly. Yep. Uh, with regards to um, OIH, <clears throat> that's an energy thing, uh, energy servicing, and um, it definitely looks like it's got some legs as well. Okay. Here, give me a brief moment. I have to jump to that OIH. So... This one probably not trading as much volume. Yeah, just it's like a spottier chart, as we kind of call it, more inactive in terms Skinny. of the volume. Yeah, right. you know, three hundred sixteen thousand shares traded today, but uh, this is an oil ETF. So I'm not as familiar with the oil sector, uh, or at least uh, crude in particular. I know that there's a few oil stocks that our traders tend to focus on, and I'll look at them, you know, off of news or off of you know more active mornings in the pre-market trading tr trading hours. Uh, Oxy. Okay. Yep. Apache. Yep. Uh, MRO, um, if I'm not mistaken, is another one. Right. Marathon. Right. Uh, Valero, VLO would be good. And Cog, HAL. So yeah. I'm looks like some. It looks like something's uh, coming into that market, huh? Yeah, there, there's a few stocks that are moving up actually pretty well. This Cog one actually looked all right. I don't know how much volume it's trading per minute, but better trend here at least going into this time of the day as yeah. far as far as like again i keep relating back to what we do but in terms of a day trade uh seeing a stock near like 2 30 in the afternoon 2 45 eastern time that is you know near the highs approaching the highs even after it shook off the highs previously if it moves back up there and it's right there that's the type of trade that you would expect further strength in that direction going into the final hour of the market day. So it's not a full-fledged guarantee that, you know, hey, if this is at the highs going into the three o'clock hour, that it's going to run. You know, you need to have the momentum behind that, right? The buying. But if there is, you know, a, an order on the ask, a, a resistance level get, that gets taken out, then that allows the stock more ability to make a better move from that price for it to make the pop. Uh, you know, this this one that I'll show you briefly because this is not oil by any means. Uh, OCGN, another, another company that we've been trading across the last really several months, but across the last week has come out with vaccine news. And I have my chart all lined up here. So pardon that again. But, you know, even here going into the afternoon, this is so strong. You could see this breaking through resistance from earlier, even at 15. It had a really tough time breaking above this line here. And really, once it did, it didn't make the biggest move from it. I knew that 15 was a major level. And that was going to be a price level where we saw more volume compared to most get filled across the day. So my personal rule of thumb, and Fausto says this in his, in his own ways too, you know, just to say it, it's, it's that when a big volume level gets filled, you'd expect to see a pretty big move from that price after. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't make that big move right away after, or shortly after as a day trade, then there's a good chance it's going to make a big move, just not in the direction that you're looking for. Yeah, something's wrong. Yeah, so, you know, this was a, a as like, you know, PG is to say it was a pain in the butt today, this trade off mm -hmm. of 15, but look at where it is now, look yeah. where it went to. So yeah. when it re-broke above this 15, it still had a tough time. It was shaking about 10, 12, 15 cents lower, it seems here, but it eventually pushed up higher, used this as support and ended up making that eventual run up that we wanted from the morning. But even here going into the afternoon, this was pinning up against 16 when it broke above 16 here. And I, you know what, I could even go back on the time and sales. So if you don't mind, I could probably take a quick 30 seconds to do this here. Sure. But and when you're, when you're doing this, you have to be willing to um, have sold it and be willing to come back in, even if it's at a higher price, is because circumstances have changed. Yes. In other now, words, when you're, when you're day trading, you might, you might get kicked out. And then later in the day, it might give you another signal to get back in. And you have to be willing to mentally 
you know, buy back in something that you sold at at a lower level, don't you? Yes. Now with that though, which right. Is, which is a big mental thing, you know we're using just this one price level here, 16, just for, for right now. But yeah. it's to say that, hey, what if this stock breaks down so much it drops down to 15 again? Well, if I am bullish on this stock across the next however many minutes, then perhaps that 15 could be the, the slingshot point where we see it you know break under and over that and it uh -huh. runs up higher. Uh, you know, I was relating before to seeing a stock near the highs going into three o'clock. So if that happens, uh, to see it move all the way back up to 16, that's a tall order. So, you know, distance is equally as important as time here in terms of seeing continuation in a, in a stock moving higher. Mm -hmm. um, trying to go back on the time and sales program here. I probably need to. Do you find some stocks that are fairly orderly to do the day trading in? I mean, I'm sure if you do it all the time, there is, are there stocks that seem to trade, let's call it better than others for the day trading? Yes. Now notice, so with that in mind, notice what I'm uh, looking at on the far right side here. Mm -hmm. Look at the trade station matrix. So you're looking at a stock that has a consistently tight spread. Mm -hmm. You're looking at a stock that has big orders at a lot of price levels, even live here. We're just looking at this live order book. I was tr trying to get my time in sales to show, but I'll, I'll do that in a second. You could see even here at 1560 on the right-hand side of my platform in blue, mm -hmm. that's an order on the bid. That, that could be a potential support. Mm -hmm. For a stock trading 230 million shares, that's not really the biggest amount, but you know, just below there, and I wish that it will pop up in the next second or so. It did before, but at 15.50, the 50 cent level, there's going to be a bigger order. You can see it. There we go. Hello, 38,000 shares popping up right there. So that is an order on the bid, and that creates support. So, hey, if this doesn't break above 16 very soon, then I'd like to think it's going to test that price. And, you know, if it breaks below there, I wouldn't be as interested in buying that, st buying the stock until yeah. it can get back above this price. Right. Because right. again, I keep, I mean, I'm so thankful that you had brought up Apple out of all the blue chip stocks to start mm -hmm. with, right? Could have been Amazon, could have been Microsoft, which you did mention, but you said Apple and it resonated with me. It's just that 133. I can't be a better representation of, you know, why we resistance. Yeah. yeah. Well, why we can't catch the falling knife. We right. Oh yeah. Yeah. This yeah. To be support. Yeah. So, you know, going back to that OCGN, the vaccine play here, if this fails to break out over 16, this may look to drive right back down to 1550, but you know, it might break below there. And if it breaks under, and then immediately back over, that's a bigger sign to me. That would tell me, hey, if it does that, then there's a better chance of it, you know, solidifying that support again and for it to run up higher into the close like we would, you know, dream about, like we would hope to see. Now, the day trading, it's real important to have volume because you want to make sure they can absorb your orders. And it's real important to have relatively tight bid offers because you can't have a situation where it takes, you know, 25 cents to break even between the bid and offer, right? Agreed. And, and it's not only just based on the spread, but the consistency of the orders that are out there on the bid or the ask. So for a faster moving stock, even like this OCGN, this is a fast mover. I mean, for a $15 stock for it to be making, you know, even during slow lunch hour here, five to eight to 10 cent bars at times, you know, per minute, that that's pretty fast. So mm -hmm. you would like to not only see a tighter spread between the top bid lowest offer, but a consistency of orders that can create a web of support, a safety net for you at least. So you don't, you know, overreact on a big drop and, you know, you close out at market 20 cents lower than you thought that you were going to close out at, Right. you know, slippage. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, in terms of that, allow me just to say for anyone that's looking to get into day trading, do not look to use market orders. I would primarily use limit orders on, on my trading. I mean, unless if the stock is much slower, I mean, we can go to a name brand like Ford. Mm-hmm. I'm not afraid. You wouldn't use a, you don't like markets even on something uh, as thick as Apple. Apple moves a little quick. So, you know, it's a more expensive stock. So it should just, that, that's a very general rule of thumb, which doesn't right. always apply on a 100% basis. But, you know, Apple definitely has great liquidity for, for its price. Really quick, just to show you what happens here on OCGN, just because I have my level four up on my other screen, which you can't see, but we just missed the big break below 1550. If you just tried mm -hmm. placing an order on the bid at 1550 to buy, you're down 20 cents instantly. I see. Yeah. So to Apple, 
everyone has their own cup of tea, right? I'm not saying that it's, you know, breaking the law if you use a market order. I'm just saying my personal preference, I would primarily use a limit order on a trade, even like yeah. Apple. It has great spread and great liquidity. And then if you don't get filled, then you do a cancel replace? Yes. Yeah. Rather than just, uh, you know. Yeah. Some people say uh, well, on other types of trading, uh, you, when you want to go in, you play the prices right with a limit order. When you want out, you use markets. But in this particular case, because you're working for relatively smaller amounts of money, you're trying to, uh, you know, uh, shall we say, uh, make the pencil a little bit sharper. Yes, we need to get in at our price or better, I guess, but that's not always the case, but our price at our desired level. So I would much rather use a limit order for that, uh, you know, unless if it's going to make a huge drop that we're unaware of, and that's the risk that comes with it. But unless if that happens, I'm sure using a market order now on Apple, you're not going to get burned too bad on an entry. Uh, but it's you know on a swing on a swing trade or investment trade basis then of course you know you, you're you're not caring about the pennies on that trade you're caring long term so you know if you can get filled at 132.52 or 132.72 i don't think that's too earth shattering for you on a six month long term trade a stock like amd doesn't it do like a ridiculous amount of volume oh, does, no, I, does I that can't. also mean that the, the spreads are tight I can't believe that you just brought up AMD right now. So my, my brief uh, history with AMD, right? So I told you folks just to begin and everybody else listening right now that, hey, I started off with zero market experience back in 2014. So that means, hey, I don't really have the experience of dealing with the shakes and the rattles and rolls of you know, a stock that's making a move, let's say off of earnings. So AMD and I'll here just i remember watching this back in 2015 or 2016 one of those years and it was eight ten twelve dollar stock it was after it already moved up like 600 percent from like two bucks it bottomed out at like two bucks ended up moving up myself and a colleague at, at that time we had a, an account split and we ended up diving into amd and we did it on way too many shares it was on 3000 shares. And for us, you know, that was a lot at the time, but it's to say that that was like a day trade size position as a long four to five year hold that we were anticipating. Long story short, the research and due diligence I did on AMD at the time back when it was a, uh, you know, eight, 10, $12 stock, I guess it was 2017 at that point. Uh, but it's to say that I thought and the research I read, it was going to be a $70, $75 stock in five years, you know, between the deep learning, artificial intelligence, uh, you know, Lisa Su, their CEO. Like, I, I'm definitely interested in AMD. Like, I know a little bit about it. And I trust me, I know about it because after their first inline earnings, I, it had to have been this year, uh, we were up a little bit, it dropped. And the drop ended up causing us to lose like 80% of our profits. We ended up closing out with like maybe like a thousand or two thousand dollars net, net total. Uh, better to have a profit than none, none at all, but look what happened after. So the inexperience there led me to not get back in. And if I did, it would have, it should have been on a much smaller share size. So I'd be just at least less tense about the move, but it ended up making that big move. And the fact you just brought that up, it just immediately rem reminded me of that short story. So I apologize for bringing that up right there. Let's get AMD up here for you. Uh, with AMD, you could see from the morning today, it ended up making a big drop. So, I mean, as soon as the market opened, there was no real retracement on this. You know, for a trade like AMD, if it's not from 8150 or 8155, this range of support that it broke under at first, which it did hold as resistance, I guess it did. So there was room here. But even hereafter, as much as this stock dropped, it hasn't really made any real serious retracement back up to a major prior support level. It held it briefly here before it broke lower. And then after that, it was just a lot of chop around the 80 level going into the mid to late morning here. So this could be one of the more annoying parts with day trading. And that's not having a stock move the way that you would want it to move. So let's say here, if you missed the boat from... 8150 or 8155 is a short on AMD this morning. It was dropping, so you're not going to try and catch the falling knife, and you'd much rather go with the go with the flow, go with the order flow, right? But as this continues to drop, you might think, well, hey, this is going to continue to drop over time, or you might sit there and think, well, hey, going into this point in the day, it's already dropped off so much. You might look at this as a trade and say, all right, well, where's the bounce going to take place from? Well. 
that bounce should, or that move rather, if it's not a bounce, it will be a continuation on the way down. But that move should be right from here, this dark red line, this big support off of $80. So what's annoying about this move is that when it ends up re-breaking this support right here, you would anticipate continuation on the way down. Unless if there's something very big right below this price, you know, holding it up as support, which I guess there is you know, 79.70, but that's not as big as this red line here. You know, the, the red versus the orange represents a bigger order versus a smaller one. So even when it re-breaks below 80, I would expect continuation. So ends up dropping down just a bit and makes this short or makes this quick little squeeze back up here. Same thing. I'd expect this to begin to break down over time from the 80 level. But even here, it does a little bit, but still is shaking around. It's not making nearly as good of a move as you would want it to. And then finally, just give it a few you know, minutes of rest and break. It was consolidating over 80. Once it ended up re-breaking below that price later on, going into 1030, and it took a while, but it, you ended up getting your, your continued move. So there are times where my students will trade a stock like AMD. I will. I mean, OCGN, we just saw it before. But we don't control the stock market. We don't control the stocks that we're looking at, the stocks that we're trading, you know, even if I can trade a thousand shares of this $80 stock, which is a lot to risk on a trade, like, you know, for any trade, my 1000 yeah. shares does nothing to 44.7 million share AMD. So no, I, I mean, it, it takes in so much volume. Yeah, exactly. So it's like simple philosophy, right? It's easy to, to agree on this, listen to this, you know, recording right now and say, yeah, of course, like that makes sense. But how often do you think about that in the heat of the moment? Yeah, no, probably, exactly. probably not as often as you as you should. Do you do much with the international markets? Like Baba today gave you a nice little five dollar pop off the opening, and uh, you know, a guy like Charlie Munger's uh, Daily uh, Report or whatever that newspapery thing that he's in, uh, they took a position. Is so, it? Uh, yeah, well, let, let, me, let, allow me to ask you: Is that is that why specific? In your opinion, do you think that's why Baba popped right away after shortly after the open? Because uh, you know they're not they're not always tied or married together. But to see AMD tank and that squeeze up, that's pretty interesting. They they've traded yeah. similarly in the past. Yeah, I just was looking at Baba from the standpoint of uh, their PE ratio uh, has dropped about 33%, and okay. so has their book to value. So obviously, it's discounted since September 30th rather significantly. And there's some guys out there who are not that stupid who've been buying it. So I figured it might be something to look at. Oh, as well as a, as a, as a sort of swing trade or long term trade, then one thing I want to do here is just look at the daily chart. I mean, I'd mentioned this very briefly before. I, and I day trade probably about 80 to 85% of the time now compared to swing trading. Uh, in fact, I have more invested in crypto than I do invested in stocks. I, I day trade more than I invest in crypto, but that's a different story. It's to say with you know Baba here, as this is making what we would call a higher low from the last dip back from the beginning of this year, I would definitely want to see this build support above EMAs, look to see this begin to you know squeeze up more. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's to say if you can get in right now and then that happens, of course, you know, that, that would be great to see and you get in at a lower price. But the way this is moving, and should we get, and this is where I was saying, should we get a drop in the market, right? That was the whole preface to the beginning of this discussion. Right. You would have to expect Baba to go with it, right? So right. that's where we see a potential breakdown at this point, maybe down at 200, maybe down towards at first 196, yeah. 95 here i could even go to a weekly chart just to show even stronger support long term but you know that's where i say at that point should the markets drop and i wouldn't expect them to drop too much but it's to say a stock like this and anything that we've spoken about previously here we'll go with it and maybe something like 200 could be a long-term support level over yeah. time or if it goes to 255 the train looks like it'd be leaving the station and then better to jump on a train that's headed to boston than to florida right <laughs> <laughs> uh, if, if it's the summer, that's not too bad. So, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, that's all back to the momentum concept. Yes, exactly. Like here, yeah. right now, I mean, oh, this is one minute chart. I need to do that. Get back to daily here, but I'll jump to one minute. I mean, on a day trade side, you know, from a day trade standpoint, of course, this is dropping, right? Like, and it's right at a support level from earlier today. I mean, I just mm -hmm. made a small little bounce here and then ran back up, but there's a reason it did that, right? So right, if right. it keeps dropping down to that price and we keep seeing the selling coming in, my volume spikes here, you know, a little bit more red now and more red on the time and sales program, perhaps right. I would expect continuation at that point over time. And I say that yeah. for today, this afternoon, not to necessarily say, you know, tomorrow, this week, long-term, but, you know, from a day trade standpoint, 
the day trade strategies that we employ at cyber trading, it's to be used on a bigger scale. You just mm -hmm. need to be able to follow the order flow first in order to realize how that paints the picture on the chart that you're looking at. And then you kind of, you know, have the light bulb turn inside, you know, in the back of your head, you say, wait a second, I could apply this here on a swing basis as well. If we keep seeing a lot of buying coming in off 200 at some point, and I'm spitballing a hypothetical here, but right. let's say the markets drop, this goes down at 200 and we see a lot of buying big transactions, big prints on the time and sales at 200. There's a reason that it's doing that, or even around that price. Smart money is not always trading at one specific price level. You know, especially longer term trades, you'll tend to see you know bigger structure being built around a series of price levels over time. So it creates, like I'd said before, a web of support. Uh, I'm relating that to like the time and sales transactions here, but it relates also in terms of reading level three, reading reading the order book, seeing bigger orders that are popping up to create that you know so to say web. How about a couple of different uh, uh, stocks that it would be? Uh, uh, one would be in gambling, and one would be in uh, pot. And are there any? Gaming? Yeah, is there anything like either Dra DraftKings or Tilray or something like that that you could uh, get an idea of how that's trading? Yeah, absolutely. Well, first I'll say though, like I'm looking at my whiteboard or calendar, yeah. my, my famous whiteboard calendar here in front of my home my, at my home office. You have uh, Penn, Penn National Gaming earnings on Thursday morning, that coming up on April six, uh, May sixth, <laughs> and then mm -hmm. uh, DraftKings earnings coming up just that Friday morning, the day after. So um, I look forward to that. I, I'm not as interested necessarily in reading like the finance numbers behind it. I'm definitely interested in, in learning more about you know what they might be offering ahead if there's any other states that that's going to be regulating or legal and gambling uh, right. and opening up shop. So, you know, a company like Penn National Gaming, which acquired a social media company, Barstool Sports, uh, they've taken off, right? And they've taken off with the market, but to see a stock go from four to 140 in such mm -hmm. a short amount of time, mm -hmm. it's not to say the social media, you know, people or Barstool, or whoever is driving that specifically, but acquiring a company like that, that can give you such a bigger audience and more eyeballs on the company, not just on a social media scale, but of course, in a, uh, in a blue chip scale, so to, so to say, being spread across Bloomberg Terminal and being spread across Benzinga Pro, you know, big news alert service companies that we use here, more traders are going to get more eyeballs on a company like this. Uh, you know, it's easy to say after this whole move already happened, and I, it's not that I ended up swing trading this, I did not, but it doesn't surprise me that this made the move that it made. Now, in terms of what's ahead long term, it's all hinging upon the market, I think. You know, we're not going to go into another shutdown, right? I mean, that's behind us at this point. But between the, the tax hike potentially from Biden and a couple of other things, just with the market moving from the last few months, we're due for a drop. So to see Penn National Gaming here on the daily side of things break below my 100 EMA on the daily, it was teeter-tottering over that price for the last few weeks. We had mm -hmm. a big snap from there. Mm -hmm. uh, ends up reporting bad earnings, we could see this drop off a lot more, perhaps down towards the big support level over time, like a 75 or 76 mm -hmm. or so here, just the highs back from September of 20. Yeah, and they have drops before. You know, you see 70 going down to 50 right there. Now, Fausto, Tilray, what, what about uh, Tilray? Is anything going on with that? Well, Tilray announced officially, and uh, you know, this was speculative, I guess. We were wondering when the official date would be, uh, at least we as in my students and I in, in, inside our trading room. Uh, they've been long rumored to be merging with another pot company, Afria, APHA, and that news was made official today. So oh, okay. with that, we ended up seeing Tilray make a bit of a drop. Uh, wasn't really on our radar too much after the open, after the drop, because once it broke below support, that's where you just think, well, it's likely to just move down more and it's you know not shortable. So we're not really as interested in that as like a short. Now, as far as far as long term, we ended up trading Tilray, not just back from 2021. This is like a stock that I will probably always remember, like my AMD story from before. Not mm -hmm. that I was swing trading this, but I need to go back a little bit further on the daily chart. And if you guys know what I'm going to talk about here, you probably are just are thinking it in the back of your head. This stock ended up running from like 25 bucks back in 2018 all the way to 300 bucks. Ended up making this massive short squeeze type of move. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as a day trade, it was incredible. As a swing trade, it was something that after a certain point, we just said to stay away from because you would think it would come back down. Well, it, it definitely came back down, but anytime you see a stock make that type of move, and that's not really like a smoke and mirrors type of like squeeze up here. Sometimes my platform will give me like a, a, 
a, a move on the chart that it doesn't it's not really that exact move like reverse splits factor in and you know make make it seem like a much bigger run up this stock went from 25 to 300 so what's stopping this stock from making that type of squeeze up or even a fraction of that type of squeeze up later on and you know we're not like glued to this stock across the next year and a half after this squeeze up but if it's active in pre-market if there's news on it you know obviously we just had the uh, news today on afria we just said so and uh, Obviously, I say the word obviously because you look back in January, it ended up making that fraction of a run up, right? We saw it go from 10 to 65 and back down. So we knew that just as likely as it was to see the squeeze up back in January, February, that it was just as likely to see it dump off like it did back in 2018. So you might sit here and think, well, you know, hey, what if you end up getting in at the wrong time or what if you end up giving away a lot of the profit? Hey, it's, it's hard to say that it wasn't that it didn't happen before, right? This already made a move back in 2018, made the squeeze back in January, February here. So again, in terms of long-term and really with, with pot all together, it's similar to gambling, I will say. So, you know, it's in terms of legalization and getting it fe federally legal. So mm -hmm. that type of news should catapult all the pot stocks, but we've been sitting here waiting when, and, you know, wondering if it's going to happen this year or at all. Um, I know more and more states are, you know, opening up, but that hasn't really affected Tilray or any of the pot stocks as much long term. Uh, it definitely affects it short term in terms of seeing a pre market pop, a big squeeze up, and then the dump off. So a lot of this move here was contributed to, you know, you know, hearing more about Cuomo potentially uh, legalizing it on a state level here in New York, and then right. you know, uh, state to state otherwise. But you can't rely on that long term. So hmm. You know, if you're looking for a really good uh, entry as far as a swing, I would focus more on the chart than the news. And then when the news comes out, that should catapult things. So if you're this bullish on it long term, that's where I was saying before, you don't focus on the nickels and dimes and the pennies. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're focused on this long term, read the chart, focus on the historical you know, resistance, and perhaps that could become support if the markets drop off entirely. Mm hmm. So, all right, well, we're coming to the top of the hour, Josh. So this is a great time to just uh, wrap it up with, again, uh, who you are and, again, uh, what they can get out of the Cyber Trading University. And if you have any special offers or something, this is a great time to extend them. Absolutely. So first and foremost, um, it's been a pleasure, David. Thank you so much again for having me on your platform. Uh, sans the slight little internet issue I had, which is very brief, so that didn't really tamper too much with my presentation. Uh, thank you so much to everybody listening in right now. It's been a pleasure uh, being on this broadcast. I hope to be on, on here at some point soon. Uh, I know that Fausto is typically on here, as he should. So uh, in the event that he needs to be uh, subbed in for, or he needs someone to sub, him, uh, sub in for him, then hopefully I'll be back on here. But nonetheless, for everybody tuning in live, I, I want to show really quickly this, and I'll show my little offer here at the end, uh, our cyber group trading room. It's our live professional trading room. We host it Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. Eastern time all the way to 4.30 p.m. every day. Uh, I need to, ooh, let me try and log in here quickly. I got to show the screen here quick. You should be able to see at least the chat that's going through here. You could see a couple of our traders like Andrea and Ken and one of our instructors, Rich, commenting right now. Uh, this is just a little basic slide. And Rich, it looks like he's sharing the screen here in a second, just refreshing it. But, you know, this is our live trading room. We host our audio broadcasts here every day, our morning meeting that Fausto hosts at 9 a.m., the afternoon meeting, which I'll be doing myself coming up in just about 30 minutes for everyone live there. And I do that on social media as well. So if you're interested, folks, make sure that you sign up for our, for our trial. That would be right here you can go right to this uh link right here c2.co slash trial or you can call the following number 877-70-CYBER one week nine dollars you know just watch you're not looking to trade with us because you know you need to learn before you earn so the last thing that we would want you to do is join our room try to trade up you know the same stocks that we are on a bunch of shares you know, that's the way that you're going to lose your money, not gain your money. So, you know, if you're looking to learn first, make sure that you join our trading room as a trial member. Go right to that link on the banner below just to get started. Okay, sounds great, Josh. Thanks a lot for being here. As far as option professors are concerned, we have a weekly market update we send out free of charge. You just go ahead and need to go to the website, optionprofessor.com, and put your email in, and we go over everything from the stock market, bonds, commodities, uh, international, energy, and uh, metals. So you get a lot for your 
free uh, newsletter, and we've been doing it for decades, so we certainly have something to say. Okay, thanks a lot, Josh, for being here, and uh, back to David, and uh, good luck to everybody this week. Thank you so much. All right, thanks, guys. Uh, great, great show today, and uh, Josh, thank you for being here. Great to have you here for uh, sub for uh, Fausto, and yeah, definitely want to have you back soon. So uh, I, I, I appreciate it. Thank you guys again for having me and, and I look forward to it. Um, you know, hey, it, it was a slight bit out of my normal realm, which is good because you don't like to be too complacent. So I was, I was excited <laughs> yeah. talking about the spy and, you know, a lot of blue chip stocks that I don't day trade myself as much, but know how to review and analyze just as much as the ones that I do happen to trade. So I really appreciate that. Um, am I good yeah, to definitely. leave this room now at this point? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm just closing up here. So uh Perfect. Yeah. So, um, just, uh, yeah. So just a quick reminder for everyone, be sure to subscribe to timing research on YouTube and your favorite podcast, uh, directory or app. Also, uh, be sure to join us tomorrow for analyze your trade at, uh, 4 PM Eastern time. Um, you can always go to timingresearch.com slash live to get access to the live show. And also we have another one of our big, uh, synergy trader events this week. So it's, uh, it's been about two months since the last one. So um, we have uh, 15 presentations lined up and this will be on uh, psychology, discipline and time management. So that'll be um, this Wednesday, May 5th and Thursday, May 6th uh, from 10 a.m. Eastern time until about 5 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, so Fausto is going to join us for that. And uh, um, Josh, did you have his title? I don't have it on. I don't have okay. it on me. Oh, uh, iceberg orders: uh, How to beat uh, market manipulation is what uh, Faust is going to be talking on. He'll also be showing the level four that I brought up just before as well, the bookmap program too. Okay, great. Yeah. So um, yeah, so like I said, uh, we have fifteen presentations. Um, the option professor will be doing one as well. Also, uh, Mercedes Van Essen, uh, Michael Filigera, David Keller, uh, Valerie Fox, Jeremy Newsom, um, Julie and Adrian Manns, uh, Mandy uh, uh, Rafsanjani, uh, Norman Hallett, uh, Anka Metcalf, Doc Severson, Maria Villatoro, and uh, Sean Kozak will all be doing presentations. So, again, that's um, May 5th and 6th, this Wednesday and Thursday from starting at 10 a.m. Eastern time. So be sure to join us for that. And like I said, you can always go to timingresearch.com slash live to get access to the live events. So just wanna thank my guests again for today, Josh Levitan of cybertradinguniversity.com, first time guest here, so happy to have him, and the option professor of optionprofessor.com. Thanks everyone. Thanks, David. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs>